buy Tesla stock at $122.36, said Tom from RBC. Tom does beat the market by 1.1% looking from 2019 and his rating, well, it's not the highest, but it's not terrible. He was definitely right to say buy Tesla stock pretty much at the bottom. He still says buy more Tesla stock. Let's find out why he is still bullish. The price cuts in Tesla down another 4% as you're noting in uh, your notes to us down about 19, 20% year to date, um, the, uh, they're leading the pack here and they got a little bit of room to run. Just wondering how long they can keep this up. How is Tesla stock responding to all of this news as well as the new factory announcement in China for mega packs? Tesla stock was down about 4% in the morning today, but it pretty much gained all of these losses back by the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, they're in a unique position, right? Because they have kind of the best cost structure, right? They don't mm -hmm. advertise don't have dealerships so i think they have the ability to cut prices more than a, a lot of the uh, a lot of their competitors they're also obviously earlier to evs than others so it's a great way to really steal market share i think and ultimately they also have a lot of things that kind of go in their favor they're the biggest beneficiaries of uh, the ira tax credits um, this year and also two of their plants uh, Berlin and Austin are really uh, ramping up and those are going to reduce costs over time. So yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a big headline, right? Cutting pricing by like 20% for some of the models. Um, it sounds pretty dramatic, but when you really look at how they can lower costs, um, it's really a great way for them to gain market share. There will be some near-term pressure on profitability, no doubt, but I think the market uh, really understands this. Well, no wonder he said we should buy more Tesla stock pretty much at the bottom. He didn't say a single thing that was actually ridiculous about Tesla. Gary Black often also has some good points about Tesla stock. And he's making an interesting point right here, saying that the projected earnings per share for 2023 are going to be $4.20. Even though Gary just reduced his price target for Tesla stock today from 370 to 350, that is still about a doubling from here in the next six to 12 months. So that's interesting then there, time, I guess you, cause really the trend has been that Tesla has been losing its market share, but you think that these price cuts are actually going to reverse that? Am I understanding that? Yeah, I mean, losing market share is kind of uh, it's kind of an unfair thing just because there's new entrants coming in that didn't exist before, right? So obviously they're going to lose market share, but that's coming off of such a high number where they were the only game in town. Um, but really, it is a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, Tesla wants other EV makers because the biggest thing, the biggest competitor to Tesla is actually non EVs. Right, it's people who are holding back on buying an EV. If there's a ton of EVs out there, there's more of a reason for you to buy a Tesla. Uh, so losing market share in a weird way is a good thing because it means that more people are buying EVs, even though it's competitors, um, and it means that more people are buying EVs as opposed to ICEs. And certainly by them cutting pricing, there's no doubt that that they've been gaining market share now. Um, certainly over those who haven't cut pricing. Remember how Tesla in the beginning years ago used to get that $7,500 tax credit and then it basically disappeared and now we are seeing it back again. In the last three years, the competition still had access to these credits, but Tesla did not in 2020, in 21 and 2022. And yet Tesla EVs were by far the best selling EVs. Now we have more of a level playing field and do you want to bet on any other EV maker other than Tesla? They couldn't beat Tesla, then the conditions were more favorable to them and now it's more equal. What do you think is going to happen now? So I do think that this strategy of cutting prices is going to lead to uh, higher sales. And fortunately for them, they do have some unique characteristics that make it so they don't have to sacrifice too much on profitability. Yeah, Tom, that makes sense when you put it that way, certainly. We had you on just about a week and a half ago, and you were expecting Tesla to deliver 445,000 vehicles. It felt a bit short. Whoops, but he was right to say buy Tesla stock at $122. What's your overall takeaway just from the demand picture right now for Tesla and how it is as we enter the second quarter? 
Yeah, I mean, we probably overshot a little. We were uh, looking at app download data and trying to extrapolate. You, you can never be too uh, too sure about uh, using these types of methods. But at the end of the day, it did come in above expectations um, that, that were there just a week or two earlier. So yeah, we may have been a little too high, but for the most part, that's a strong number. Yeah, if you go back a little bit further, for example, if we look at data from March 21st, Troy was at 418,000, and that was already up from 413,000 on March 14th. Although the analyst consensus pretty much stayed at 420,000 for the last few weeks before the deliveries were announced. So a small beat or in line with expectations pretty much if you look at the consensus, but definitely a strong number for sure. I agree with that. Um, and now further price cuts, it's only going to help them uh, gain volumes even more, um, especially in China where a lot of the competition is. That's where we're really seeing a pain point for some of their competitors, notably people like Volkswagen. And BYD, which for example, is offering discounts of almost $5,000 for the direct competitor, to Tesla Model 3. This one is called a BYD seal. And remember this rumor about BYD reducing the number of shifts at their factories, potentially cutting production down of a BYD seal by as much as half. Now that really makes sense. Selling nowhere near as well as it used to. The sales dropped by more than 50% compared to previous highs. It's a great way for them to at least maintain their position to people, to the domestics like BYD, et cetera. So I think price cutting is just a natural thing that they have to do to keep growing. That Q1 number is really strong and they're just doing it to kind of keep the momentum going. I also think they have their own view of the economy. Um, Elon has talked about this in the press. So he, maybe he's a little bit more bearish on the consumer, especially in the US. And so it could also just be uh, some caution into a macroeconomic uncertainty in the back half of the year. And you know what, if it doesn't happen, if we don't have a severe re recession, like your, your previous speaker was saying, then it's just a great way to gain market share. I'm going to say something that appears to be negative at first, but actually it is a positive. Tesla just posted that because of fewer moving parts, minimal maintenance is required. Every Tesla is designed with the goal of eliminating the need for service. If your car does require attention though, you can use the Tesla app to request service with just a few taps. No paperwork, no endless phone calls. Now, it was time for our Model 3 to have an air filter changed. My wife said, when we turned on the air conditioning, it stunk. So I watched a video about how to change an air filter for our Model 3 and it looked, well, you sort of had to be a little bit careful. There's a video on YouTube that says how to safely replace your Tesla Model 3 air filters in 10 minutes. The easy way, although the video itself is 13 minutes, 52 seconds long, but somehow you're supposed to do it in 10 minutes. Okay. Also, I was surprised to see a title containing safely. Why would you put the word safely in there? And before I watched the video, I was like, I don't think that's necessary. And when I watched the video and when I was like, that word is very necessary. The video actually does a great job at showing how to do it. But let me show you a few things that made me really not want to do it myself. Now it sounds like they're snapping and breaking, but it's okay. That didn't really deter me from wanting to change the filter myself. I didn't like it, but it doesn't seem like too much of a problem. Although I know some may not be gentle enough and maybe something would happen, but I don't think that would happen to me. So I was okay. Okay. So we have a light wire that needs to be removed and a speaker wire that needs to be removed. After I saw that, I was like, why do I need to remove these wires just to get to the air filter? I'm not sure if that's really necessary. I guess it is, the video says it is. I'm not sure. I, I didn't bother after that. I was just like, yeah, I, I'm not even going to try here. I don't want to try to mess the wires. Mm, I'll just try to get service even if it costs me a few hundred dollars. I just don't want to deal with that. We then actually used Tesla's mobile service and it only cost 75 Canadian dollars, 55 USD roughly. I thought it would be more. 
I mean, the guy actually had to come out with an actual air filter and he did the whole job pretty quick too. I wasn't there when he was doing it. My wife was there, but the whole experience was actually pretty nice, which doesn't really compare very well to other brands that we have owned. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to talk about this, but I thought it would be more than just 55 USD to have a guy come over with an actual air filter already. So we do not need to have it ourselves or pay extra for that. That 55 USD included everything. Does that make me more likely to buy another Tesla later? Yes, of course it does. It definitely does. Moving on to batteries, and this has to do with the Mega Pack. Um, within the last 24 hours, Tesla announcing that they're going to build a factory in Shanghai for Mega Pack batteries uh, with uh, 10,000, targeting 10,000 per year. Each of these Mega Packs could theoretically power 3.6 thousand, so 3,600 homes for one hour. And could you just give us a bet, maybe back up, give us a big picture on this and why this is important to the electrical grid and what this means for the future, because people think Tesla cars, but it's also power and these mega packs. Oh, you mean Tesla is not just a car company? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, it's really great that this is happening now so people get kind of educated. The fact that this is a completely new uh, business opportunity for Tesla. And yet most Wall Street analysts are not pricing in this opportunity for Tesla stock. Almost none. Here's what's interesting about Tesla Energy, specifically about Megapax. The Lathrop factory, it broke ground in 2021, September and then a year later it began production. Wall Street is forecasting $9.5 billion in Tesla energy revenue in 2025 and $1.4 billion in gross profit for all of Tesla energy, not just mega packs. Dylan is the host of Electrified YouTube channel and he's estimating that the current run rate at Lathe Rob is 3,600 per year, which could potentially be already generating basically $7.2 billion in revenue per year. And you put a 20% margin only on that and you already get what Wall Street is expecting a few years from now only. Sounds like a buying opportunity, doesn't it? And then a very, very important topic for, for an energy transition. And that is how utilities can use renewables uh, more efficiently. Right, right now, solar and wind, you only get them when it's being produced, right? When it's sunny outside or there's wind. Now with battery storage, you can actually time shift uh, when you use this these feedstocks basically for utilities. For China, it's a very big deal. For Europe as well, they're net importers of fossil fuels. And now they can use renewables, which is just there, right? Solar and wind. So battery storage allows them to, start to, to time shift when they use it more efficiently um, and what Tesla is doing is it's another big uh, piece of their business or will be potentially in the future. Right now, it's fairly small, but total addressable market for uh, you, for energy storage could be in like half a half a trillion dollar market by 2030 in huge business opportunity. And Tesla is really one of the leaders in this space. So, you know, what they're doing here also, it has great impacts. You could, um, you know, avoid blackouts in the U.S. that was used in California. Right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of res uh, uses for, for energy storage. And now by them investing more, this is their second facility now, um, they can export some of that. They can utilize that in China as well. There is actually one more important way that people can benefit from mega packs and not many people are actually talking about it. And that is by buying Tesla stuff because as mega packs get scaled and as Tesla produces a lot of them, if Wall Street eventually realizes that Tesla is going to make a whole bunch of money from these mega packs, and even if they don't realize it, but then they see the actual profits in the earnings reports, that's when Wall Street would assign a more serious valuation to Tesla's energy division. And this is an important message to all Tesla stock investors. Make sure to watch it if you haven't yet. My name is Matt Posius. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.